In this video, we'll learn how to customize a .pdf template so that we can fine tune the format of the final .pdf output file to suit our needs. First, let us take a look at the .pdf file we generated. You might recall we used a template file called standard underscore manual .mnl. As you can see, the opening page is bland and has repeated the author's name. Now let us take a look at the .pdf file that I offered as a guide to download the trial version of Help and Manual. Notice the image on the opening page. We could substitute this image for another one too. Notice how the author name isn't repeated. Also the second page has the disclaimer and the copyright explained. Here's the best part. All new topics start on a fresh page with a neat introduction graphic. Doesn't the second guide look way cooler than the one we generated? Now generating PDF formatted this way is easy. To generate the second PDF file, I used a different template called classic underscore manual dot mnl. This is available in the list of templates provided by Help and Manual. But the beauty is that even this template can be tweaked and saved as a new template file, which is what I did. We look at the template simultaneously along with the output and I'll explain how I tweaked the existing template to arrive at the new one. To open the template dot mnl file, proceed as follows. Make sure the project tab is open and from the ribbon, click on templates and skins. The drop down opens and notice the templates and options in the drop down. Position your mouse on PDF and print templates and from the sub menu that opens, click on the classic manual.mnl template file. A message box prompting you to open and edit the template file is displayed. Click yes. The template file is opened in the template editor. Expand the editor for better viewing. By default, the tab for the cover page is opened. As you can see the cover pick. This one provided by Helpin Manual is displayed. I use the same in my template, but you can also change it. To change it, right click on the image and from the shortcut menu, click delete. I can even use copy and paste to change the image. Notice that as I move the mouse, the various elements of the cover page get selected. A box surrounds each element the mouse is pointing to. To modify properties, just select an element by clicking it first. Next, use the right mouse button to invoke the shortcut menu to modify or delete the selected element. Notice the title and copyright reserved words on the cover page. Remember them from our generating the online help video where we tweaked their values. So I leave the cover page untouched. I next move on to the title one tab. Notice that this page appears gray and has a giant cross across it indicating that this page will not be printed on the final output file. I'll explain how to tweak a page and also enable it for printing in a moment. Let us move on to the next tab, title two. This page is printed, however, if you notice my page in the output, it is different from the format indicated on the page. How did this happen? This is because I tweaked the contents of this page. Let me show you how. First, I enable this page for printing. For this, I right click here on the top of the page and from the menu, I select edit properties. In the dialog that opens, check the first box to enable it for printing and click OK. When the dialog closes, observe that the grayness and the big cross mark across the page has disappeared, indicating that the page is enabled for printing. Next, to delete or change the elements on the page, do it like how you would do them in an editor. In my case, I have removed the following portions, which I can do by selecting those elements and pressing the Del button. You could change the content also to suit your style or your company's style. From among the remaining tabs, I have disabled the title 3, forward, end notes, end notes 2 and back cover. But these can be tweaked for instance, you may want to enable the back cover for printing if you were to print manually on paper. I leave the other tabs as they are. Finally, save this modified template with a new name so that you may reuse it for other .pdf files too. For this, click on file and from the drop down menu, click on save as. In the save manual template dialog, give the new template a name. That way you also leave the default classic underscore manual dot mnl file untouched. While publishing, which we saw in an earlier video, all you need to do now is to select this new template file when you opt for the PDF generation option and your PDF gets printed according to the settings of this new template file. 